Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Radio OPEC, a weekly conversation series occurring Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time over Facebook Live on the Ohio Prisoners Connection Facebook page. The day is July 10, 2020, and a special welcome goes out to our audience members who are seeing this inside of a correctional institution. Uh, the Ohio Prisoners Connection is helping to facilitate uh, via DVD copies uh, shared with several Ohio prisons this very show. So thank you everyone for, for joining us. My name is Jared Small and I am on the steering committee for the Ohio Prisoners Connection, which is a, uh, a, a group of stakeholders whose mission is to connect the arts to those who are justice involved. So thanks again for joining us. I am here in conversation today with Duart Brown, Duart is a visual artist based in Whitehall, Ohio, who works with, oh boy, with several community organizations dedicated to using the arts as a platform to affect positive change in young people. So um, I've had the pleasure of working with Duart for a couple of years now. It's, I'm extremely excited to be in conversation with him today. So Duart, how are you doing? How's it going with you? I'm really good and really glad to be a part of this and really glad to see that people care like this. Thank you for that, yeah, absolutely. Um, so today we're going to talk with Duart about, about working as an artist and, and kind of a mentor uh, to help reduce risk factors for students. Um, so a fairly broad ranging conversation, but uh, I'm gonna dive right in and just ask you Duart, if you could just tell us a bit about yourself, you know, uh, who you are and maybe kind of what what got you to where you're at today in terms of working with with kids? Basically, um, I come from a family of seven boys and three girls. Um, my um, younger four younger siblings, I, were, I was kind of in charge of. My fathers, our fathers, weren't around, and so um, I had this sense of abandonment. And my mother was gone a lot, so um, I assumed the role of like a father at an early age, or an adult, or a mentor, or whatever you call it. And I really didn't learn how to play. Um, but when I made art. I seemed to find a way of uh, like answers came to me. It, it like it was a way to um, get clarity, and I didn't understand it until I tell people about it now that it it gave me a way to uh, articulate or make sense out of life. They said I was shy, but I was thinking honestly. I was thinking, and when I made art, I would respond to the things people were telling me to say. And so I think I really been painting with my brush from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do that, or there's dance, or what they, whatever they, whatever they find a, a natural bench toward. It's the way they we navigate through life. Yeah, that's great that you found your brush. And it's funny that you say that you're a shy, a shy kid because <laughs> knowing you a little bit, uh, it's such always a pleasure to get to talk to you. <laughs> Lots to always talk about, certainly. Um, you know, I, I know a bit about your your own artistic work. And, and the work of your students. So just for folks out there, I do work with the Ohio Arts Council, which supports uh, essentially artists in residence programs in schools um, under what's called the Teach Arts Ohio program. And Duart and I initially got connected through that program. He is a, a resident artist, so to speak, at a couple different schools in Central Ohio. So that's kind of how I've come to, to know Duart, but uh, I also know the work of your students. And a lot of that work tends to focus on uh, kind of this, this creative desire to heal in, in all of its forms. Um, so, so I've been really intrigued about how you use art as kind of a healing agent um, with kids. So can, can you talk a bit about how you do use art as a healing agent, um, some of the techniques you might use or what you choose to focus on I'd love to hear you talk just about art as a healing agent with, with students that you work with. Well, we try to use art as a narrative in a way that, that people can begin to use it as a narrative. But where we started at one of the schools, they were, if they didn't get a grade for art, they threw it in the trash. So what, what we did, I started drawing faces to like and demonstrate studio habits, like take care of your supplies or, you know, uh, and, and draw, start a drawing of a face in front of everybody, but bring it back the following week. So it shows a, uh, a promise and a commitment. It's like establishing these small steps of uh, trust and um, honor, like in the sense we honor, like if you give honor to a person, they give it back. But if you take control of a person, they'll resist more. I mean, it's like the sense of 
we feel like controlling people is a way to lead them. But I think they've been controlled so long. And some kids are like been on their own into a degree that they kind of see what you're really all about. And if, if they can discern this person that's really genuine or authentic or is honest about who they are, there's some some camaraderie that seems to happen. And many times it'll happen over time. And you you almost got to let them that pe- that the students speak first. You can give an instruction, but it's good to like listen more than you talk. And if we learn to do that, we'll be given, we'll, they'll, they'll be surprised that we noticed something that they cared about. And well, th- this is my way of saying, uh, as you know, speaking from a place as, as us teach, t- teaching t- type, but when you really care about somebody that, um, when, you, when I say care in a way, they first they just watch you. And then they show up again and they start saying, you're my dude. And they start saying things that, you know, you really don't have. And people think that I have control over them, but I don't make them, there's, they don't always, they don't always do what I ask, but then they'll all of a sudden turn around, like after a year, they'll sit around your desk and won't let you go. They'll become like, you're my friend, not their friend. You know, it's kind of like, so I'm saying to say, um, and then, then, you know, when you find out what they care about and make art from that place or make something from a collaborative place, then it's like this relationship happens. And it's, you know, it's, that's kind of how it works for me. And since I'm an older person, I kind of, not a father age now, I'm almost like a grandfather age. So I got the, you know, double joy of being a grandfatherish type person. And many times they'll talk to me like I'm their age, but then they'll look again, you know, because they're not sure since I'm not really talking the same language, but yet I'm not really correcting them neither all day because I'm really there to make art, not to be a, a policeman. So um, I really, really try to cherish that and stay in that, that lane in that sense. Yeah. You mentioned some components uh, that there's a lot of trust that goes into the, your relationships with these kids. Um, and what I've been really struck by when I see you work with them, hear about your work with them, that there's a certain amount of vulnerability that each side kind of gives yeah. um, and that you kind of consider that pretty sacred. Um, that you, know, you mentioned those relationships where um, it's, it's a slow process to earn someone's trust as you know a visiting artist a resident artist a mentor an outside person so i I, i've just been really struck by how you can go about earning the trust of students who sometimes you know are coming to you from uh, really different head spaces um, are dealing with a lot of things perhaps at home or with their friends so um, i feel like that trust is is kind of core to what you do would you agree with that you think or or, or oh, what, what's the magic rub for you oh, oh for sure the trust is really most important but then you'll have kids that you'll meet for the first time they may be struck by something you do or they may answer all the questions but sometimes that is a sign of a person that's not always listening they're mm-hmm. seeking things for herself so you've got to know that don't be offended when that person doesn't show commitment because people that speak up right away get real talkative and get real controlling that sometimes that's another need being met. That's not the, and the, the, the person that doesn't say a lot, that seems like they're not even interested, that listens more than they speak. If you notice, you'll begin to notice that that person shows much more promise and commitment, whereas the other person drifts to the next thing that gets them a chance to be like, a t- like, cause we're needing, we're all needing attention and in, 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 in some kind of like buy-in, but, but just, just don't take it personal when that person that answered questions at first, the next day blows you off. And doesn't have nothing to say so it's like you can't take none of it personal when they like another teacher or say somebody's cool or you know and you can't really like go in there thinking that you, you, i'm young enough or i got a nice car or i'm cool enough or you, all those things really don't matter the transparency of being genuine if you walk with a limp and you walk slower just just use it as a, a, a strength not a weakness wow. don't, don't apologize for not having you know whatever whatever you think it is because sometimes we think that I have to have a younger person to connect to the next generation. Really, if we come to our authentic self, people are looking for authenticity across the board. There's no, there is no, the generation gap that we put there is we put it there. The only generation gap is the one we put there. The only gap that's in between us and another person is the one we let stay there. So Mm -hmm. if we choose to go outside of our realm of calling something a gap or calling it a, you know, a bad experience, you just, you just deal with someone and, and accept who they are, come the next day, you might not have the set of things you gave them yesterday. So you got to see every day as brand new mm-hmm. and you can't assume that people automatically like you got to, I mean, do you understand what I'm trying to say? You almost got to walk with, like navigate around people and emotions and making art with the idea that if I did something nice for you, it wasn't a string attached to get you to do something nice for me. It was because this is what I do. And I'm thankful that you did it for me. But if you don't do it, I'm still going to 
you know, be the adult or be the person that's leading it away and be thankful that you did it. But, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Somewhere along the line, you got to come with a resolve that mm. it's not a fail because they didn't act the way you want or you couldn't get their attention or they didn't like your idea. You almost, you almost just got to just stay around and listen more, just listen more and then yeah. find ideas they like. Ask what kind of thing. I mean, do you know, you understand what I'm trying to say there? Well, absolutely. It, what you say when you say it, the, the listening more, talking less, <laughs> I think really <laughs> resonates with me. But, but specifically when you're working with kids like you do, um, that helps them feel more respected. You know, if you keep that in your mind, but also from their perspective, um, listening to what you have to say and how you, um, close that gap. I, I also really like what you said about the distance that you put between you and someone else, be it physically or um, emotionally or what have you. Um, those are just the ones that you choose to leave there. Yeah. I, I find that really interesting and kind of, I would suspect, pretty key at how you, oh how you choose to deal with kids who might be coming from or who have experienced intense trauma. Yeah. yeah it's actually, sometimes Honestly, as adults, we are, we we still are in and out of the throes of that because we 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 keep it good because a job and a, a class comes in, but then there's some people that may trigger some of our own stuff, and so we might not be able to act. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can recognize it and 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 move past it because sometimes the traumatic experience that a person has triggers something that we've buried or layered or forgot about or been away from, and then when we get around someone that manifests behavior that we don't know what to do with and feel helpless. Um, there's something in us that can be triggered. And, and if we are able to recognize, yeah, I may have still some of this residue in me, I may feel a certain way, but just, just look at it and don't hold on to it. Don't give it a place to really um, be confused by Just understand this, our feelings fleet, they're in and out they're, they're The emotions, the, the, you know, like someone, they taught us about, it's just, they taught a group of people about um, sticking beads into a piece of clay and then trying to take it back out without making the clay worse. And that's, they said, that's what it is when you deal with people, the emotional behavior of people, when you try to fix it, usually you make it worse. And so you almost got to learn not to try to fix people, but try to like work with people oh. and just see what's there now. Don't, don't really work with what's there. Not, not, not try to look at it like you think it should be. Mm. Work with what's really there. Like if I have a person that only Whereas black hair it doesn't like to look up at nobody except, you know, whatever whatever thing it is, whatever thing it is, mm. don't really try to say you should be like the rest of the kids. You should be more normal, or don't 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 keep that. Don't make that another wall that the person. So I've I've had a kid come at me, and I'm just going to say this. This may sound really shocking. He brought a jar full of um, bat heads in the classroom. You no, know, in a, in his in his box, he was on his phone, and he said, I said, so uh, you know, you can't wear headphones in the class. And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm listening to the satanic altar call. I said, okay. Well, um, can you take them off just for a minute so we can go back to, I mean, I want to get you to, I want you to understand this. And he just stared at me because like, it was like, um, and instead of acting surprised and, you know, taking on a, a issue, like arguing with him in front of a group of kids and saying what should happen, he already knows what should happen. All right. I mean, realistically, it's like, like, if you don't get shocked, there's no value. It is no, no reason to get even, you know, and it's almost like, okay, are you, you fat, blah, 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 something, something. Okay. What's, what else is new? I, I do. I am kind of big, <laughs> you know, so it's just this thing where, um, Whatever you say, you know, it's already been said. It's not like it's a word. It's not like, you know, sometimes we need to insult somebody because we're testing people to see mm. how far they're going to go. Like this, the kids are like, you know, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but we've been told what to do, how to get up, where to go and why they're going to school, how to, why they got to get an education, why you're not, if you, you're not going to get a job, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that. So we have all this, this stuff that we say every day to get them motivated, but that's, if they only for themselves, one person said to me, Mr. Odom from Centennial High School, he said, if I want for a student or a person more than they want it for themselves, I'm really barking up a dead tree. Mm. It's not what I want them to want, it's what they want. And if you can empower what, what a person I say they want, when they want a job, when they want to learn, when they want to do it, uh, it the whole idea is that, 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 to create a, like a hunger for that if you can. And if they watch you commit to your stuff and do always working on your own thing, not just a project, bring some of your own, what, what, is your, what drives you, what motivates you, what makes you go after something, go after life. When people see that in you, they want to go after their life. It's like we, we see that in each other. We really see people really like putting the effort forth. And, and when we fall down, just get back up and try it again. You know, we're just not, we're just not, we're not a hero. And I told one, miss, you know, one of the teachers won teacher of the year and in, in the seventh grade. And when she came back, one of the students said, they say off the wall things and said, you got man's hands, like to a teacher, um, a woman teacher. And it really broke her. But um, 
So when I was sitting in the room, I said, well, the student of the year teacher is a teacher that comes back to school the very day after she gets the award and deals with the kids mm -hmm. that are irritating to no end. That's why the teacher won, not because she stayed there, she stayed the course, and whatever was said is the part that comes with the territory. You know, yes. when you're going through the lion domain or you're going to the, you know, not the jungle, but a place where it's rough or the streets, or as they say, you know, <laughs> you, you knew what you were coming into. So somewhere along the line, not to say just be tough skin, just know that you stayed. That's why you won an award. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Th those are wonderful narratives that you shared. Thank you. I, I particularly enjoy the, the concept of, of people are clay and don't mold them into what you want them to be, but they will kind of tell you, like, it's yeah. kind of up to us to yeah. want them to make them to want. I, I want to jump in here and just uh, welcome some folks who might be joining us on the live stream of this video. We're here in conversation with uh, Richard Duart Brown, who is a Central Ohio-based visual artist who works with all kinds of community organizations, specifically working with youth. And we've been having a wonderful conversation about uh, what is that connection between him and those kids. And we don't have much time for this last question, but I wanna make sure I get it out, Duart. Um, you know, you've worked with a lot of different kinds of young people, um, some of whom may have experienced the justice system firsthand, or they might have parents who may have experienced it. Um, specifically, the, the, you, um, I believe you might have had your own interactions with, with judges. Yeah. Um, can you just spend maybe a minute or two talking about your experience, what you've learned uh, by uh, working and interacting with these kids whose lives have been touched by the justice system? Well, um, whatever you do when you talk to, when I say the kid that's in the justice system, is try to talk one-on-one -on -one as much as possible and always try to like remember um, things like how you felt when you were, what, either, for me, I needed somebody to feel like they authentically cared. And I remember talking to one kid who was, who got his suspended at school. He, every time they talked about him, they said, well, he didn't do this and he didn't do that and he didn't do this and he didn't do this. And so I went to speak for him at the um, welfare department because of it, he was gonna go back to jail with his, he had an ankle monitor on. And I said, well, he showed up to art class, he was on time and he had an interest in screen printing and the whole room got dropped there quiet because they're always used to saying what he didn't do. And when someone said something, what he did do, it changed his whole look at itself. And it, then it was like he opened the door to me. And so he kind of had this respect. So when his counselor brought him in, he got in trouble because he went to school and he, and he was, you know, got in a fight and got, you know, kicked out, you know, getting to the point where he was going to be expelled. And so he came to the art class for the last time and he talked to me and I looked at him in his face. I said, you try to be your mother and your father. And mm -hmm. some, at, at some point you still have to be a child. And um, I said, but you can't carry that by yourself. So that's why we're trying to help you. And the, the lady said that he got dropped there quiet. He got in the car. He cried from um, the, like downtown toward all the way, way out Livingston where he went because I was able to say something that he was trying to be, he wanted his mother back, but he had put, got put into a system, got in and out of places. I drew him when he was younger, met him as a teenager, didn't know who he was, but because he had this authority and this feeling of, of you know, this in that scrawly face. But yet at the same time, he said, this, he gave me this child I respect because I knew him as a child, but I really didn't remember him. He told me I drew him as a child. So it created this e extra thing. And I think drawing faces and taking pictures and saying names and acknowledging their colors, that builds a bridge. And then chances to say things like, you, you, you've been, a, you've been your own adult, you've been your own parent. So yes, you'll make mistakes like that, but you got to let it go. I love that. And I think that brings us full circles, the drawing of the faces and, and um, the connectedness amongst you and them. And, and always, frankly, you're just always, you seem to be there for them as a sounding board. So I just really appreciate that. Um, before we go, I want to just remind folks that uh, we're going to be doing a live audience talk back after this conversation. So folks who are joining us live on the Facebook feed, click on the link below in the comment section of this video. You'll be connected via Zoom to the audience talk back. So we'll spend a bit of time uh, unpacking what we've heard today and reflecting. But you know, do our, we always uh, close each edition of Radio OPAC with um, what we call a moment of reflection, just a chance for our guests to share some of their own artwork or artwork that might inspire them. And I, I wanna leave a, a minute or two for you to do that. And to make that happen, I'm just going to uh, share my screen and you should be able to see your artwork right now. Can you see yeah, it okay? I see it, I see it. Fabulous. I've just got three pieces of art. Duart, would you mind telling us just a bit about, um, just a couple of sentences, what we're seeing here? This one is by a poet in our city named Trip Fontaine and he's from Dayton and, um, and it's got a picture of um, the, um, XX, the little young kid XX and some kids from Whitehall that I drew and a poem that he wrote, Permission to Cry Mom, because he was trying to be the, the husband and the father, but 
um, he asked his mother for permission to cry because boys don't cry and they don't they don't deal with struggle. And so it was a poem that gave you permission. If you ever look him up, you find those words. I was moved by the poem. So I did a picture, a collaborative piece. That's his poem in it. You can't see it on the screen exactly, but if you blow it up bigger, you can see what it says and it's very moving. And it, it, it kind of hits the nail on the head of uh, dealing with like, you know, what they call toxic masculinity where you're trying to be tough and strong and, and you and you hold everything in and you can't cry and and you, and you feel weak if you if a tear falls out your eye and somewhere along the line he puts it in a way and says even you know you know he just he just breaks it down and takes that 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 stuff off of it it was a fifth grade teacher that cried in front of me when martin luther king got shot and it really impacted me to no end so that's this guy hit that nail on the head that's great we'll move to our second one here tell us what uh, a bit about this piece it's, it's kind of ear for um you know growing or spiritual things and this kid that i met at whitehall um jovan that's his name actually and he he was in a room in, in miss mindy's class and he turned left and i took a picture i said oh my god look at the picture of that like he was looking for his purpose so i compared merged three different pictures one from whitehall one from where i go to church at and one from transit arts john spain and his wife and one from champion middle school they're drawings from different places so i merged them in the picture to tell his story about finding his way to, to to a hopeful place that's really what is that all the kids are always looking for even if they don't show it they're looking for their path they're looking for the way they're going so these works that i do just kind of like affirm me and and kind of like tells my story and it's just my dream it's beautiful got one more for everyone out there <laughs> this is called two young doctors they were actually doing uh, basketball at they they played they played basketball at high school they were both ninth graders at the time and uh they had to tie each other's ties so the image in the background of the people embracing was inspired by the L, after the la riots it was the idea of comforting humanity and i use them and call them young doctors because it was like calling who they are making a picture that projects who your vision is or kind of creating a path and looking for the gold that's in people you know mm -hmm. that's what that is so it's like i always like and I, and I kind of focused on young men because if young men acted right, they would treat young women right. So it was my intention all along to help young men find the, the, the true self they are so they would be able to be respectful, strong, and, and, and responsible citizens. Yeah, that's fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and thank you for joining us for, for Radio OPAC. I really appreciate the time you've, you've taken to share with us some of your work and, and kind of who you are as a person. It's such a pleasure. I'm going to remind folks one more time here uh, that we will be hopping on the audience talk back right now. Uh, so click that link down there in the comments of the Facebook video. Um, and uh, in the meantime, do our thank you again for joining us. Uh, everyone else, please continue to join us for Radio OPAC live every Friday at 11 a.m. on the OPAC Facebook page. But um, just thank you, do our for everything. So it's much. a pleasure to get to call you a, a friend and colleague. So I'm here. Um, Thank you, Jared. Yeah, we'll see everyone in the talk back. In the meantime, uh, we'll sign off for Radio OPAC for today, July 10th. Take care, everybody. All right. All right. Now, just close out. <laughs>